thank you for watching my uh, videos and stuff and supporting me. Today we are here at Ascend Monsoon. Uh, it's Emancipation Day where they remember the uh, North, uh, the Atlantic trade. Uh, today is the end of the festival that we have in here today. And so we're here to take part in the, uh, the last day of uh, activity. Coming up on August the 15th, the, uh, we'll be launching our, our Patreon channel uh, on August the 15th. And I need your help and support so that we could continue to uh, bring uh, events up to you like we have them right here today.
Sanya
a young certain uh, member of parliament of Asin South. Thank you very much. My respected colleague, Member of Parliament for Second D, Honorable Andrew Kofi Ejapa Mesa, the revered Chief and Paramount Chief of Apumenim Traditional Council, Barry Makwami the 13th, the Paramount Chief of Apumenim Traditional Area, Apumenim Nananum Atsakunya. The Sibra Pribu, and we see the seventh paramount chief of Abazi Dominance traditional area, but therefore Tibudakmo Ampim, the second paramount chief of Asen Atelensu traditional area and Atelensu Nananum Atankonya, Orenshi Main, Futia Kamain, Nananum Nanahima, the CEO of Ghana Tourism Aid Authority, my good friend, Mr. Kusiajiman, the representative of the regional minister, the representative of the DC, a special guest of honor, Professor Samuel Atu Duncan, the CEO of G GTDC, Mr. Kudu Odame Entry, my favorite rabbi, Rabbi Kuhin, Professor E.C. Sutherland of the Panafest Foundation, our distinguished brothers and sisters from the diaspora who say Akwaba to you, our revered and esteemed clergy, our same mind, ladies and gentlemen, who say Akwaba to you all. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue was singing. Them that are taking us captive required us to sing the Lord's song. And we said, how can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Then they said among the healing, the Lord has blessed them. And indeed, the Lord has blessed us, whereof we are glad. Today, we have gathered to celebrate freedom from a rather unfortunate and regrettable phenomenon that began some 400 years ago the transatlantic slave trade. This was the most inhumane phenomenon that one can ever imagine in the history of mankind. This saw some 12.5 million, estimated 12.5 million of our brothers and sisters of our royals, our compatriots, that were taken in a very inhumane manner across the oceans to destinations unknown. The nations that I've never imagined they were going to be. They were stripped of their identity, they were stripped of their dignity, they were stripped of every fundamental rights that they were entitled to. But today, we are celebrating over 200 years since the abolishment of this phenomenon. And we here gladly, together with Nananum, welcome all our brothers and sisters who have joined us from the diaspora to say that you have come back home. This is indeed home. As in Mansu plays a pivotal role in the narrative of the slave trade. This is where many of our ancestors took their last path in their journey to unknown lands. Today we pay tribute also to some 2.5 million of our royals and our brothers and sisters who perished through the process. Now all of these together have shaped us in a resilient spirit to forge ahead in a spirit of unity that as we remember the ills of this rather unfortunate transatlantic slave trade we want to recognize that all the great things that our compatriots represent us in the diaspora and all the iconic contributions that they continue to give to the shaping the development of mankind and globally give us consolation. Today, we have lands available. We have opportunities here in our local industry here, local economy in Asen. We want you to come back 
to stay with us, eat the food you used to eat before you travel, take on the names you used to have, and let us build on the culture. This is your home, this is your land. And therefore, together with the Nanum, we are going to ensure that your stay here is enjoyable and is memorable. At this point, we want to appreciate the Ministry of Tourism, the Tourism Development Authority, and the Tourism Development Company for their support in ensuring that year on year we have the fitting celebration and even their support to Nananum to ensure that we continue to give our monument a facelift. We are very hopeful that one of these days we are going to see a monumental facelift in the monument that narrates the story of this unfortunate incident. to come and speak on behalf of those from the diaspora so I must be obligated to ask do I have your permission to speak yes, sir. Nana Barima Kwame Enshi the 13th thank you for allowing and welcoming me into your house honorable minister of tourism arts and culture Thank you for making sure that this event continues. And I stand on all other protocols that have been set in motion. Came to Ghana and I learned to study under Nana of Arabia of Latte. And I sat under Bapo of Foto, the linguist for Santahini, a tomb for Fokowari. And I was blessed by my mother. Nana Kuasa Afiye, who was the chief priestess of Ashanti. So tradition and culture is extremely important when we are talking about emancipation and freedom. And so there's a concept, it's called that the Asahilia said, all content has intent. In 1834, the emancipation by the British was content, but it had intent because 40 years later, they sat in Berlin, created the Berlin Conference, cut Africa up into parts that is now 54 states, and then put us back in slavery for another 100 years called colonialism. So that was the intent of their emancipation content. I hope you understand what I'm saying. But intent, should also produce content. That's where we come in. Our intent, when we talk about emancipation, should produce the content of true freedom. And as I said last night, true freedom is to be shackled to your identity. And I'm not talking about ethnic identity, tribal identity, I'm talking about the racial identity. African, that is our identity. Stephen Biko told us, the young black man in South Africa who died for our freedom, he said the most powerful weapon in the hands of the oppressors were the mind of the oppressed. The most powerful weapon in the hands of the oppressor is the mind of the oppressed. And that is still true today. We must learn to use our culture appropriately. Culture is how people reinvent themselves. It is culture that protects the people from mental genocide. 
Though we suffered a, an extraordinary physical genocide, we never lost our culture. So the mental genocide was not successful. That's why we're here today. So your culture is what protects you from mental genocide. But we have to go further into that because we need to understand when we come together and we feel the, the, the pain of yesterday, let's not have that as the only intent of those of us who was captured. If you study our history, we have waged one of the most fierce wars over 500 years against slavery, colonialism, imperialism. No people in the history of the world have fought against oppression as the African people have. We didn't just cry. We didn't accept those chains. When I came here the first time, when there was only bush and no path to the river, we knew then that we died in that woods, we died in that sacred grove because many of us fought when we got to that river to be free. We didn't accept slavery, ever, never did we accept slavery. We fought on the ships, we captured many of the ships, we just didn't know how to get back to Africa. So many times they recaptured us, but we fought at sea. Millions of us died at sea because we resisted. That's right. We resisted. We're being here today as a resistance. This is our intent as regards their content. We are going to be free because we declare it. Power is the ability to define your reality and have other people accept your definition as if it were their own. Then you're talking about freedom, true freedom. Me, I'm a student of Malcolm X. Some don't know me at all. You know Professor Small. But when Malcolm X was assassinated, I assumed the role. I took over, 21 years old. That's Professor Small. Then I was Manal Kofi Mbansa, the second. 42 years I'm on the Agogo school. This is my home. This is my heart. This is my land. But I want us to know, yes, we suffered, but we resisted. Let's remember that resistance. Last night we were talking about Sister Sutherland. She showed us how to resist with culture, with music, with drama, with poetry. We have resisted. Mr. Saba was a resistance. The Andre family, that's a resistance. We talk about Chief Sam, we talk about a resistance. We talk about Von Su when he marches his army down and he takes Elmina back from them. That's African Ghanaian resistance. Don't just talk about the pain and the crime. Talk about the ancestors' resistance. It's important. And I'm gonna be quick with this because it's just important that we know, yes, we suffered. We hurt, but we resisted. But now that we're back, and we've been coming back, we didn't just start coming, you know. Booker T. Washington, in the 1800s, had a conference on the Negro world in Tuskegee, Alabama, and Ghanaian representatives were there. You didn't just start mixing with us. We never gave up. We never lost our identity. Someone took away the tools by which we practice that identity. And so what we are trying to do now is restore our own tools so we can practice our identity in the manner that we want to practice that identity. And I'm gonna end with this plea that we understand that coming back should be based on four things, economics, politics, and culture, along with our assumption return to our African sacred science. Africa never had a religion. My grandmother was an indigenous Okompo in South Carolina. We call them root women there. I'm born in that house, raised in that house. We had a way of life that involved the divine itself. If God is omnipotent, omnipresent, supreme, then nothing else can exist but God. So what are we? We are expressions of aspects of the divine existence. I think it's the Ewe here in Ghana who say, 
Sogbe Lisa, when they refer to the divine. This is Sogbe Lisa, they say the totality of creation is divinity. And we are about an aspect of that, each one of us. So when we come back together on this celebration, yes, we suffered, but we fought. We are still fighting. Just being here is an act of resistance against tyranny. Slavery was not a work program. We did not sign a contract and agree to that. That was genocide. But we defeated the genocide. Look at us, we're here. We're victorious. We defeated them. They have not won. They've never won. They simply slowed us down a bit. But we're back to develop our land, develop ourselves, develop our culture, so that true freedom will see us shackled again to our identity. Thank you very much. Ah, 
video don't forget to subscribe like and share and go in the description box and click on the link and go to the essence store and find some merchandise that help support the channel thank you very much